Welcome to Lead by Design. I'm your host, Elle Edwards, founder of Yuya and the Blue House. Every episode, we hope to bring you lots of different stories from lots of different humans, because if you're human, you are a leader. It's your Genesis 126 mandate. Uh, and so if you're human, you're a leader, and we can bring you lots of stories from lots of humans. And today, we are bringing you another story from not one, but two amazing ladies here in Wales. They're from Merthyr Tydfil, uh, and I am delighted to, to introduce them to you and to hear their story. This is one where... I guarantee you're going to leave this episode feeling encouraged and inspired with a great big smile on your face because their story is brilliant. It's all about this, the gloriness, gloriness, that's not even a word, the gloriousness and brilliance of, of the things that God has been doing and the powerful reminder about following just the next step. You don't need to know the whole path, but I'm getting ahead of myself. If after you've enjoyed this episode, you know somebody who would benefit from it, please do share it with them. But without further ado, let's get cracking with today's episode. I would love to hear uh, the um, where you decide to start this story is up to you, but how you got to where you are today. One of those big open ended questions, the journey you've been on. Uh, let's let's start there and see where we go. I think uh, the grace of God. Let's go. Let's go with this. So we um, are not visionaries. We are women who are wanting to obey the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and more so Heidi than me um, in that. <laughs> so here's the story. So um, Hope Pantry did not exist before lockdown. So when lockdown happened, um, basically my husband, who's the pastor of Hope Church Martha, went, babes, like everyone's going to be in their homes. We have to do something. And I was like, three weeks off? Like, I, don't, I mean, do we have to? Like, and so, and he was like, yes. And I was like, yes, we do. Lord, I hear your voice too. <laughs> um, and Heidi, and it came as, to find out that actually Heidi wasn't supposed to be, uh, what's the word? So I was sent home from work. Um, I had a condition that meant I needed to be home for these 12 weeks. And my heart has always been for people who were lonely, isolated, old, what have you. And we'd had um, like a visionary meeting in church about a year before where we literally said what we would love to do. And I was like, there's all these people that I see in my role, in my pay job. um, And they're lonely and they're isolated. And what do we do about them? And we put it on the back burner. And then we went into this lockdown and Paul rang me, Lisa's husband, and said, Heidi, what do you think about this? And I went, yeah, that's great, crack on. And then I rang him back and said, oh, no, that's me, isn't it? (laughs) And literally, by the grace of God, I was home for the 12 weeks. So we, within 24 hours, we'd set up um, a phone number, an email. um, And then while I was at home fielding phone calls, Lisa and Paul and a group of wonderful volunteers were out and about doing shopping for people, We were befriending all the stuff that everybody did in the first lockdown. Mm. And that's pretty much how we started was because of COVID. Mm. Yeah. So we had originally, um, so I run a toddler group. um, And so we've got something called Fair Share Cymru that we're involved with, which I think if you're from the UK, you probably heard about Fair Share. Um, And so we stumbled again basically our story is God placing things in front of us and that's going well that sounds good (laughs) and so like and so like (laughs) like our testimony is one where like God just kind of laid out like we were in a meeting I think we have a heart to be um connecting with outside organizations so that we're not a church that looks like we're just a lone Mm. ranger um and so in one of those meetings someone mentioned fair share camry and this membership and up to that point we had used fair share go um which was for our toddler group so you go to tesco's you get stuff that the best before date had gone but you could still use because it was still okay and so when we started uh i guess the, the origins of hope pantry we were just using stuff where the best before date had gone so it was and then we were buying stuff in. So we were going and clearing shelves of baked wow. beans and clearing shelves of whatever. Mm-hmm. And and it was in one of those meetings that somebody said about a membership. And I was like, what is this thing? <laughs> and so like God just kind of like opened doors and provided means mm-hmm. to food. And so even like Tesco's called us right at the beginning and said, 
we've got um, over a thousand tins of soup mm. and whatnot mm. that we're gonna have to throw away because we're trying to reduce our plastic intake <laughs> or plastics. Yeah. Like, let me get this straight. <laughs> so you're reducing waste. I wasting I stuff. Away. <laughs> anyway, God didn't let that happen. And so all those tins came here. And so that was kind of the origin. So it was just this, we must respond to something because as a church, we're meant to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And so then like, what does that look like? And the Holy Spirit literally just opened door mm. after door after door. Wow. Mm-hmm. So we were doing we, we were doing shopping for people. So our volunteers were going out and doing shopping. Mm-hmm. And then we started to get referrals for people who didn't have any money for shopping, which is how we started doing some free food parcels gotcha. with the Fair Share Camry and with any tins we could get hold of. Nice. Um, and then I went back to work. So the 12 weeks were up. They decided I was no longer clinically vulnerable and off to work I went. And we didn't know whether that was going to be it, really, whether life was going to get back to whatever normal was. Um, and it didn't really, did it? It sort well, no, of got what became busier. What became quite obvious was that the people who were struggling for food weren't struggling just because they were in their mm-hmm. homes. Yeah. And so there was this, I mean, Martha Tidville has a reputation for being one of the most deprived areas in Wales. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we kind of got to the point where we're like, this isn't, this isn't something that's just going to be resolved. Mm. Is it? And, and again, like just silly stuff, like me Googling something and stumbling across something called your local pantry. And then being like, Heidi, look at this. And Heidi being like, oh, no. probably never be us. <laughs> and, and just grants that were thrown at us, like people calling and being like, we have this grant we would like you to apply because we'd like to give it to you. Wow. And just like, and I, so I think this is the thing is for us, like whenever anyone asks us about pantry, like, like we actually have no wisdom to give except for just listen to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and that's the best wisdom. That's <laughs> so good. <gasps> yes. Yes. Ultimately it is. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's I mean, so good. We were having, so before COVID, when we were trying to get in with various different organisations, the third sector, what have you, mm-hmm. um, and people would say, oh, no, you're a church. Ooh, no. Mm-hmm. Or they would say, sorry, we don't fund churches. Right. And the people that were saying, sorry, we don't fund churches, for like your toddler's group, your youth group, would quite literally given us tens of thousands of pounds and saying, we've got some money, please have it. We've got some money, please have it. And as a church, we'd said, well, whatever this looks like during COVID, mm. we'll commit to fund because it's what the community needs and what Jesus would do. It's not our money, it's his money. Yes. Um, and we really haven't put our hand in our pocket. Mm-hmm. You know, from where we were with one small fridge mm-hmm. that was given to us, we've now got fridges, freezers, chest freezers, display fridge freezers. Oh, they, you name it, they funded it. I mean, you're talking 30, 40 Fifty thousand pound over the last eighteen months, two years. Wow! And it blows your mind. And every time we've had a need, it's been met. Mm. And it's just that you start off with faith like a mustard seed, mm. believe, ask, and he does the rest. Yeah, so so. So that's how we start. <laughs> Sorry, we could talk. No, it was just... brilliant. It's so so good. So you said that when you first started that you weren't working. You had a you had a job and you were um, on. It's been all that time, and I forgot what that word was when they used to give us like to, to stay at home. Shielding, shielding. Yeah, there you shielding. go. You think we these words that we picked up, and you think you wouldn't forget, but we do, don't we? So your job then was that for the church? Was that separate from church? No. So um, oh. by by trade, I'm a social worker. Oh, okay. Why? So I was working in the local hospital, and we had lots and lots of people that would come through that I would assess. They didn't see anybody for a week. Mm. That had nobody to talk to. They had nobody to bring them a toothbrush. Oh, and that's really where it was boosted in that there are people out there that need the well they need to speak to somebody they need to see yeah. somebody they need to eat a good good diet mm. they need all mm. sorts of things and that's what we're here for you know the bible's very clear that you look after the widows and orphans yeah um, and that's what we're called to do and if we've got a building and resources mm. and a desire then we've got to do something about it and it took covid wow. um for that to happen so yeah and then um skipping forward a bit so when we started hope pantry as it is now for the first year i was working full-time in the hospital and doing pantry 
Wow. Unfortunately, so was able to pick up a lot of the pantry stuff mm. uh, because a lot of the group hadn't, hadn't started back from COVID. Yeah. And then it came to the point that we had to make a decision that I needed to choose one or the other. Mm. Um, and again, God worked a miracle. And well, our church leadership said, uh, obviously, the money is not there for another salary, but mm. we want to have faith. And so we're going to hire you. Wow. And then we, we applied for a grant and the grant came through. And so Heidi's. So it was kind of, again, it just really felt like God's kind of blessing and you step out in faith and I'll meet you in that faith. Mm -hmm. And so as our church leader stepped out and said, right, we're going to do this because it's the right thing to do. And we feel like Mm -hmm. this is where God is leading. And so therefore he will provide. And whether Mm -hmm. that's through a grant or whether that's through, you know, magic money. No, (laughs) (laughs) give some people blessing you, I think is the Christianese phrase. (laughs) Don't use the word magic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. But I mean, there's times like that, isn't it? Where you just think like, where has this come from? Yeah. We, had, we even had this week, which was such a sweet thing. We've got so many members that come from one of our housing associations mm-hmm. and they've got a member's um, fund, charity fund, fund, a charity fund where they get to choose a oh. charity they want to put this money towards. Mm-hmm. And so we just got a random email this week saying um, our members have chosen your charity as their favorite charity. And so therefore we're giving you £2,500. Oh, wow. And you're like, you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just crazy. Mm. It is. And it's, it's been step by step because I think if you'd have told me 18 months, two years ago that this is what I'd be doing or this is what the church would be doing, I'd have emigrated to Australia. <laughs> um, because my skill set is not running a food pantry. Um, Lisa's skill set is not running the food pantry. Lisa's skill set doesn't involve anything with organizing at all <laughs> or memory. And that's why we complement each other really well because I've always got a pen and paper about me. Um, and it's, it, again, it's just God's kindness of, and it, and it has been a faith thing step by step. Mm. Uh, but I'm guessing you can ask us some questions about how it works and, and all that. So. Oh, we might get to that in a minute. I just, I just think it's just so good. I mean, we may or may not get to the logistics of how the pantry works. That probably would be sensible. But I'm just relishing in the journey and the stories. It's so good. Oh, it's amazing. And so, like, so the premise of this podcast is that if you're human, you're a leader. And so I want to ask you a lead, leadery type question uh, based on Genesis 126, you know, that mandate to, uh, from there. So, like, how do you, you're both obviously really busy. Like, we'll get into the logistics of what day to day life looks like in a moment. But I imagine you've both got lots of things that you're doing and juggling. How do you, to use a metaphor, put on your own life jacket first as, as leaders of, of the pantry and make sure that you're both well looked after? Answer that is probably community. So for both of us, um, we've got our own friendship in which we kind of would encourage each other to be in the word, to be, you know, like we pray together as you're know, like as now the Heidi's employed our anyone who's employed by the church we meet um not just to kind of go over the logistics of the week but we pray together um but I think more importantly probably is our wider church community and so within community groups just that encouraging to we we do life together Mm. and so from that perspective like and we've we've practicals as well so both of us will encourage each other to be like Heidi will yell at me. I have a little bit of <laughs> like one thing, one thing I don't mind doing at all. So when it comes to organization or when it comes to memory, I don't have any of that. I love talking about Jesus. And so like I love the opportunities when you have something where people are coming into the church mm-hmm. and they need so much more than food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we both have struggled a lot with like so you're not supposed to be on this week and you're like yes but can I please just come by like (laughs) or like did you see so and so were they there um but yeah I would say community is probably yeah I I would agree with that I think that I mean I I've been in the church for about 10 12 years I didn't didn't really know Lisa very well before COVID I'm honest we would sort of live parallel lives um but I think we know each other really well now and we know when each other is tired we know when each other needs to stay at home and have a pajama day Mm. um and I think some of that practical stuff in any working environment it's Mm. go 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 don't stop yeah and I think in a church community you've 
got to be better at saying it's okay to stop. And I mean, in my previous work life, there was no off button. Right. Uh, so having that freedom to say, okay, it's okay not to, yeah. is really good. Um, and that's important because you have to look after yourself. You know, the saying goes that you, you, you can't give from an empty cup, can you? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and there have been times, I mean, by Christmas, we were both exhausted. Oh. And I think the pair of us did nothing over Christmas except sleep and watch Netflix, I think. <laughs> <Well, perspective. not> <laughs> <laughs> with our respective families um but recognizing that that's okay too you yeah. know god doesn't want us to be so tired we're no use to anybody yeah because then we are no use to anybody mm. uh, please excuse dylan in the background <laughs> yeah, it's fine hi dylan in the background our podcast <laughs> listeners won't get to see dylan in the background they'll only have the audio version but it's okay <laughs> yeah no that is such an important reminder and i love the fact that you it sounds like the, the church are doing a really good job of modeling good leadership and good support and, and you know kingdom principles as opposed to sort of copying some of the models that lead us to being burnt out uh like like you it sounds like was happening in your previous job so yeah tell us a bit about the pantry i have to say i love the fact that it's called the pantry and not a food bank like we have food banks here in Tlaethi which do an amazing job and this is no disrespect they're, they're brilliant but it, it just changes I, until i came across you ladies i've never heard it called a food pantry it just it seems to change the dynamic and i don't know if you've was that a conscious decision I mean, so that would that would come. So we are. So remember that, like random Googling <laughs> your local pantry. Well, that turned into us actually having affiliation with them. So we are a your local pantry pantry. Oh, um, OK. And so, again, this comes back to we. So we're an independent church, um, but we don't like to be independent in that. Like we, we love accountability. We love to have, you know, like things in place so that we go above and beyond. And, and when it comes to the culture, then asking questions, we can say like, look how, you know, all our kids workers are safeguarded. <laughs> like let's, our um, DBS checked and our safeguarding policies are like, we want, we don't want to do anything that's like underhand. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and so, and also I think we didn't want to be this like lone church that was doing this lone thing and then being like, look at us. Um, and so, we came across your local pantry, um, which is um, initiated by Churches Against Poverty. Okay. And so um, they've just got a really lovely model. And I think, again, initially, the thing for us was like, oh, you have to like, you know, the fees to, to be a part of it. Um, but it is just an amazing organization and just provides, and I guess, God's kindness again. And that like, because we're not organized, I'm not. <laughs> sorry um but like you know to have like software you like you just see how god's gifting to different people mm -hmm. so even like in the technical like production of, of apps and software and just like this is blessed by god mm -hmm. and so you know like for us um that's where your local pantry so that's why we call it pantry so it's your local pantry so we are hope pantry there's three in cardiff um there's there's about 75, 80 in the network all over the UK. Right, wow. Right. Um, and the main difference is, is that it's not a food bank. So mm -hmm. members pay for their food. Right. Um, so our membership is £3.50 a week. Mm -hmm. And then members come in and choose what they have. So they literally mm -hmm. come in, pick up a basket and go shopping in our pantry room. Mm -hmm. So we've got fridges, freezers, store cupboard staples, pet food, toiletries, cleaning items. And we're not designed to be your only shop. Mm -hmm. We designed that you get goods here, you save about 15 to 20 pounds mm -hmm. and then it stops you being swept into debt, hopefully, yeah. um, by saving money on your groceries. Mm -hmm. um, and it's based on dignity, choice and hope because yeah. food banks are important. Food banks have their place. Mm -hmm. But what we found during COVID is that people didn't want random strangers turning up with tins that they may not want, they may not yeah. eat, they may not have the ability to cook with them. Um, but this way people come in they choose it themselves they've mm -hmm. got dignity it's a community pantry for the local community so everybody's involved with it our volunteers are pantry members people get somewhat of a say in 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 what we do mm -hmm. um, and it creates community and it creates a sense of belonging really yeah so that's the difference between us and then uh, between us and a food bank you there's no referrals Mm -hmm. You have to live in our area and find life wobbly in terms of your finances. But we have conversations with everybody that applies. Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, you know, if you can afford three foreign holidays a year, this probably isn't the place for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're struggling to pay your rent and your gas and electric, then yes, we are. Yeah, that's so good. And I love that. And it, it almost it sounds like they get a sense of ownership then, but you know, it's not just something they're they're giving into it as well in in and yeah, you know, that's I think such a beautiful, beautiful model. So you mentioned earlier on, uh, Heidi, that if you'd have known this, you'd have emigrated to Australia, uh, which would have been lovely and warm, I'm sure. So if you could remind even more, both of you, to your teenage selves, uh, what would you, you know, the, the wisdom and all the journey that you've done this far, is there anything that you could that comes to mind that you would say to your teenage self if you could go back and, and encourage her mine always goes back to it because I think I was always looking forward so like you know I think especially like I am a teens leader as well so I always tell my teens like don't worry about finding a spouse like just <laughs> focus on like the joy of right now because it'll happen if it's meant to happen and if it's not God will give you grace in that but I think it, the baseline of it is trusting mm. God's design for you and your future. Mm. And so instead of kind of like trying, there's a resting. Mm. Yeah. And so just resting in who he's made you to be, resting in what he has for you, because we can't, we can't handle it. I mean, this was like, I mean, we were, my husband and I were five years into marriage and we had three children and a hip replacement. Wow. And I often be like, do you think if we knew that five years ago, we still would have said yes. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like his kindness and the fact that he does like the next step instead of being like, you're going to do this. Because I think we would have been like, how do we start a pantry? How would you even go? Like, how would you do that? Yeah. Whereas like, because he just illuminated each step and he just went, mm. all right, well, the door is open. You're not shutting it. So we'll step. Yes, we'll, let's go. Yeah. That's yeah. So what would you say? I think I would say don't strive, don't worry. Mm. Uh, that, yeah, God does have a plan and that when your plan doesn't go right mm. and you think you're on path A and you know, God's actually taking you on path B, that that's, that's actually the best for you. Mm. Um and try not to second guess and try not to change God's ideas because he knows far better than me. Um, yeah, it's, it's wild, really, I think, when you look back, even even a year, 18 months, never mind 20 odd years. Mm. Um, sorry, they just had a prayer meeting. That's why there's more humans behind. <laughs> Fine, we like humans. Carry on. Yeah. <laughs> They're very quiet humans, in fairness. So. <laughs> <laughs> they love us, see? <laughs> no that's so good I love it it's so important and just yeah brilliant reminders so thinking about the last 18 months and this whole journey you've been on which has just been an amazing adventure so are there any pieces along the way because I imagine I mean life being life it hasn't all been perhaps um you know roses and, and brilliant and, and all the rest of it have there any have there been any sort of ahas that you've had along the way that you didn't know lessons that you learn or pieces that you perhaps didn't anticipate learning but you look back and go oh well you know that you know that actually um, this thing was really hard at the time but as a result of this um no they had a rosy those out um <laughs> no we have had we've had so i think you had like I think this is the thing in that like there obviously there's been troubles hasn't there like and but I think because of that whole aspect of Psalm 91 like he'll be it, it, like be in there with your troubles isn't it like that that actually it doesn't then feel so like the weeks where our food would just disappear yeah, no and food. you'd be like there's the oh, wow. fridges are empty what are we gonna do mm. and and praying that God would multiply the food or praying that like for some reason people would just be provided for that week and they wouldn't need to come yeah. or praying that they really liked minced tinned minced beef like because we had plenty of that you know like and so I think there was there's lots of stuff that came up but it's like I don't I don't think there's anything that we've walked through that's left us like oh that was such a traumatic experience wow. like I think I don't think there has been I think recognizing how we get enough food it's always been an issue because we started off with our fair share that was 50 kilos and we were like can we afford 50 kilos this is like 15 to 30 pounds a week wow. and now we have half a ton plus we buy extra pallets of half a ton 
Good so our plus, problem, plus we're able to provide for a local fruit guy because we spend oh, wow. two to three a week on fruit and veg. So I think initially it was okay. We haven't got enough food. Then all this food came. Where do we put it? So poor Dylan, who you've seen in the background, just had three different offices and we've kicked him out of every office <laughs> as we've taken over more areas in the church. Wow. And it's just been it's just been the kindness of the church family to say, do you know what? We don't need that as an office. We'll, we'll work somewhere else. Wonderful. Um, but again, I think it's just been it's been problems, but God's provided the solutions. Yeah. I think the hardest thing and probably the bit that we got most stressed about was the need and not being able to fulfill that need. And so when you have your applications open and your waiting list gets to like, so you've already got 200 members and then you've got an, a waiting list of 50 people and you're just like, there's oh. no one in this right now that's going, do you know what? My gas and electric bill has gone down. I think I don't need pantry anymore. You're like, mm. and so you're heading into this, this time where like everyone's pressed, mm. everyone's pressed. And so like, so from that perspective, I think that's been our biggest issue is that mm. like we've had to close our applications multiple times because there's not, there's yeah. no like projected no space capacity. for how they would yeah. get off of there. Yeah. And generally your local pantry doesn't like to have multiple pantries in the same area right? because they're like, you know, we don't want there to be any kind of like conflict or, mm-hmm. and we're like, the more, the merrier. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're on. Just yeah. because there's such a huge need. So I think mm-hmm. that's probably. I, yeah, I would agree with that. I think before Christmas, it got to the point where I almost wasn't sleeping. Right. which takes me back to a previous work life and I was like no this isn't right we shouldn't be here where you're not sleeping because you're worried about people we can't support yeah. um but we have to look after the ones that we do yeah. and I think a recognition that we are not the answer to everything for everybody yeah and that we can do what we can do yeah. and God will increase our borders as needed mm. but it's okay to say no yeah and I think I'm I'm not great at saying no Mm. um Lisa's much better at saying no in practical terms of things coming in Mm. but we've got to because we have to protect the people that we've already got in pantry because they're the ones we have responsibility to yeah um yeah I would I yeah I think that's been the hardest bit yeah, those boundaries are important, aren't they? They but you say they can be quite difficult to, to put in place. So the, the thing that comes to mind then, so is there a, a structure in place then for so folks to come into you because they're in a bad place? Obviously, and we you know it goes without saying, but we're going to say it to date where we are. But like the the current sort of economic climate, shall we say? So is there a provision in place to sort of like help people? Do they, do you, do they have um, budgeting advice and sort of how to manage the money better and that sort of thing? <laughs> uh, so we have. So again, trying to not be everything to all people, but definitely using what's available. So we've got a cat money course that will be running at the end of the month for three weeks because one of the guys in our church um, has done that before. And so he was like, I'd really love to do that for your pantry members as well, Mm -hmm. um, which gives budgeting advice. We also have um, Welsh water that'll come in and they will, you know, make sure that people that have the option to be on Welsh Water Assist are mm. um, provided for. Yeah. Interestingly, though, I would say about at least half of the people that come to pantry are not on any sort of benefits. Right. They're the squeezed middle, the working poor. So yeah. we've seen a change in the demographic in the last six to nine months. Mm. We've got a lot more people that are working. So, you know, you can imagine you've got a fixed income with your with your salary coming in, but your mortgage goes up gas and electric everything goes up yeah and you've still got you know kids to feed and whatever else and yeah. pets to feed mm. um and contracts to fulfill because we are very much a culture where if people are budgeting they budget according to their income don't they yeah, and then you course. sign up for contracts so whether you have a spy contract or a mobile contract and then when these things stay stable but your gas and electric turns into your mortgage payment mm. you know like that that's mm. huge, isn't it? And those yeah. things don't alter. And then the emergency payments that come out for people tend not to go to those yeah. that are earning Worthy. just enough either. Mm. Yeah, true enough. And even like you say, we had an email the other day, like I mean, broadband, I appreciate is a luxury, but like we need it for work and whatever. Like it, that's gone up by like 13% because it's gone up in line with inflation. And so I imagine Sky will do that. The mobile phone contracts, they're all doing it, aren't they? Increasing with inflation. Yeah, interesting. It's, yeah, I don't... I wish there would be some like magic solution to all of it. There, there isn't, is there? But 
be magic. It's <laughs> Yeah. God is magic, like a god solution. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I think I think I think it keeps going back to the fact that again, like he knows, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think for us, that's where we have to come back to that place that we can trust okay. him. We yeah. have to trust him with the people that we can't do anything about because we're not the savior, he is. Mm-hmm. And so, like, even in those that we have relationships with, mm-hmm. if if all they get from us is food, that's great. But actually, there's something so much more important. And so I think with those that we can't have to be able to signpost, but also to invite them to be part of our church family or like. So one of the things that came out of the fact that actually Heidi never wanted to start a food pantry that was never like on her agenda. <laughs> no. But this heart for the lonely and those that just really needed friendship. Yeah. Um, yeah. what came out of that then was out for an hour which is a friendship cafe that we run twice a week now mm-hmm. I say we I yeah. don't run it yeah. out no I do that for fun yeah <laughs> and again there were people coming to pantry that didn't need food but they mm-hmm. wanted company oh, so they'd come because wow. we've got space where people could sit and have a cup of coffee and a chat and they'd never leave yes. um, which was fine but that but this wasn't the place for them so yeah. by having the space downstairs it's an official warm space and mm-hmm. with lots of fun activities to do or just drink coffee um it's created another community where people are coming in they're feeling loved they're feeling cared for um and again we get you know referrals from people and the local dementia team come along mm-hmm. um and has that been how i thought it would be not in the slightest mm-hmm. you know the first couple of weeks i had one person and then for a week or two, there was nobody. And I was like, well, what's the point? <laughs> um, and God said to me, well, you look after the ones and twos and I'll do the rest. Mm. You're just charged with looking after whoever comes through your door. Mm. I'm like, oh, sorry, God. <laughs> um, and like last week, we had 22 in the one and 17 in the other. Wow. Today, back down to five, but we've had snow. But it's just trusting God that, you know, he brings them in. We do our bit. He does the rest. And he gets the glory because this is nothing to do with me and Lisa. <laughs> oh, it's so, so good. And I love this. We're going to, we're going to entitle this episode, the, the grace of God, like, cause it's just the way every single story you tell is just a reminder of how good God is. And, but and, and I have to, we have to recognize that you are listening to him and you are taking those steps, you know, you, so there is, you know, it's co-laboring it, it you, you, to me, you look like this beautiful example of, of what co-laboring with Christ looks like. It's just so glorious. There is so much more we could talk about, but we try to keep these episodes about 20 minutes, half an hour. So we're going to leave it there. But um, before I, I'm going to ask you to pray over our audience before that, but is there anything else before I do that, that, or before I ask you to do that, is there any of the last pieces that you're getting nudged that feel really important that are on your heart to share? Because I never like, we, we have a bell here in the blue house. We call it the last orders bell, um, which we ring i'm not going to ring it now on the podcast i'll make everybody jump but i just don't like this thought of somebody being left with oh i wanted to share this so i just make sure there's nothing else that's on your heart before i ask you to close this no you're both content okay well in which case i just want to thank you both so much for joining us today it has been glorious we are going to put links to to your website and your facebook page and bits and pieces in the show notes where people can check you out presumably you have a donate button on there as well where people can tr- you don't have a donate button no. No, but we do have uh, something else that I'll look into. <laughs> I'm sure we're signed up with one of the many like grants that was kind of thrown at us. And I think one of them was with your local giving. Yeah, your, yeah. Some yeah like we can, we can sort out the logistics of that. I'm just recognising we have people who are not local to, to even to Wales, so who will be listening along and they might be like, yeah, that's amazing. I want to sew into that. So I want to make sure we give them opportunities to do that, whether it's this week, next week, or any year's time, whenever they come across this episode. But just it's been glorious and you've just encouraged me so much. So would I, could I ask one of you, both of you, whoever, just to release a prayer over our audience as we close our time together? Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you so much that you give us you. Lord, that you are the one that we get to experience relationship with. And Lord, just the fact that out of that relationship, you extend so much grace to us. Father God, we thank you that you just give so many good gifts. And Lord, I thank you again for that truth that you are with us in times of trouble. So when things don't feel like they're just falling into place, you don't remove your presence from us, but you're with us. And that's the sweetest bit. And so Father, I just pray for 
everyone listening right now, Lord God, would they just be so aware of your presence with them in the midst of their troubles and the grace that you extend for every situation that they're walking through. And Father, I pray particularly for those that are looking for open doors, Lord, that you would just open doors and that they walk through with faith in you, that you will provide the next step at the right time. Mm-hmm. Um, and Lord, I just thank you so much for um, your grace and your goodness. Um, And Lord, I thank you for the day where food banks and food pantries will no longer be necessary uh, because there will be an abundance of all things in you. I ask that you would just bless all these listeners um, and Al herself. And Lord, just ask for your kindness to be displayed. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining me for today's episode. I really do hope it has been a real blessing and encouragement to you. I know I did guarantee it, but honestly, we smiled so much during that episode. It was just the best. Don't forget, you can find out more about what the ladies are up to in Hope Pantry via the links in the show notes. Uh, With that reminder as well, we talked about the power of community. If you do not have community, we have you covered inside the Blue House. We have um, two types of membership levels, depending upon what you need. Yumia.com forward slash join is where you can find out more about that. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And don't forget to share this episode with somebody who needs some encouragement. Thank you for being here. I look forward to catching up with you very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.